As a drone operator, we know that the collection of high quality data is imperative to producing the best results, whether that be the video or photography. It's all about the collection of that data. Hey everyone, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Ad Hammer Missions, and in this video, I'm going to explore the key concepts behind collecting high quality data for the purpose of photogrammetry. Let's start with the importance of GCPs. GCPs, also known as ground control points, are points that are laid out on the ground that have known coordinates. A GCP is often a square of a checkered fabric, as shown above, that is laid down across site at various designated spots. These markers act as known coordinate points. As I mentioned before, these points are laid down across the site and they are measured using an accurate GPS device, for example a DJI DRTK2 GNS mobile station, to gain centimetre accuracy. This data can then be tied in with the GPS information from the drone to create your final photogrammetry image. This extra data will greatly improve the quality and accuracy of your finalised projects. Using high overlap and optimal GSD. Using a high overlap and optimal ground sampling distance, also known as GSD, will ensure that the data you are collecting is accurate and contains no missing information. High overlap basically enables us to bridge the gap between photography and enables photogrammetry processing software to find the key points in the images to stitch all of these images together into a map or a 3D model. By setting up the software to overlap the photos, we are also able to eliminate any blank spots when the mission is in flight and we are able to make sure that the drone can see different points of the site from many different points of view. Overlapping, which is normally set to 70%, means that every photo that is taken will overlap with other photos to the, to the left, to the right of it, to the front, to the back of it by 70%. Typically, higher the overlap of, of the data, higher would be the quality of your end outputs. However, we also, we also expect you not to go too high, as, it, this, as this may not be the most efficient approach. Ground sampling distance, as the name implies, refers to the amount of ground surface area that is covered by a single image in flight. If you're flying a mapping flight with a camera facing down, that is the nadir position of the camera, and this distance is basically the amount of ground covered by your drone per image in flight. The lower the GSD, the higher the resolution of the flight, and more details you can see in the captured images, therefore improving the quality of your end output or the end data. We have, an, we have an entire video on GSD, so if you want to find out more about that, we recommend going and checking out that video. Avoiding motion blur. Motion blur is the apparent streaking of moving objects in a photograph that you would need to avoid or at least reduce the risk of when capturing the data for photogrammetry. There are two methods that you could use to avoid motion blur. Uh, using our supply software have emissions. Firstly, you could essentially use the option to stop and capture the images. This is integrated with our Hammer app, where you can essentially stop the drone and capture the image, which will get rid of any motion blur that you might have in your flight. The second option is to manually set the camera according to the lighting conditions on the day. This option will calculate your motion blur letting you adjust the acceptable parameters accordingly to reduce the motion blur whilst in flight. In fact, once again, we've made a whole video on motion blur and how you can prevent motion blur. So if you're interested, do go and check out that video. Flying in optimal lighting conditions. Making sure you're flying in optimal lighting conditions is essential for capturing data that is usable in photogrammetry projects. If, if a subject is lit too much or isn't lit enough, the final outcome, once again, you, you would have collected all this data and processed it, but it wouldn't look as good, it would look washed out or patchy. So this can be overcome in most cases by manually setting your camera's exposure, giving the lens of your camera more or less light to process. Generally speaking, on a dull day, you would want to have more exposure, that is more light entering your drone's camera, and on a bright day, you would want to have less exposure. It's not recommended that you set up exposure to automatic settings for your drone camera, so we actually expect, we actually, we actually think that it's better if you set it up to something like manual because changing in ambient lighting conditions during the direct day is very, far, very likely and your drone might suddenly be capturing an area that is dimly lit or shadows or has shadows all over it. You might also experience a sudden cloud cover on a sunny day, again drastically changing the lighting conditions of your flying environment. 
So if you have auto exposure, setting the camera will constantly be adjusting itself and will create inconsistencies in the data produced. So once again, if you want to learn more about automatic exposure settings and why it's a bad idea for your drone, uh, we do recommend checking out some of the links in the details below. Flying with optimal flight speed. Flying with the optimal flight speed is key, but flying not too fast is important and flying not too slow is really important as well. So given that's the case, how do you configure it? Well, this is where Hammer Missions or Flight Software can really help you. Hammer is able to calculate the optimal flight speed based on the configured parameters of the flight. But how do you calculate optimal flight speed? To understand a little bit more about that and what parameters Hammer typically takes into account, uh, we recommend checking out our video on optimal flight speed for, for photogrammetry missions. Using ground offsets if mapping a building or a structure. How do we make sure that our data is a lot more accurate when photographing a building or a structure? The easiest way to do this is to essentially use a ground offset feature. So in simple terms, ground offsets refer to the height of the building or the structure you're trying to collect data off. Essentially, this, this feature allows you to offset the overlap calculations by the height of the building, thereby allowing the footprint of the drone being accurate when projected on the, on the site or the asset. This gives us a tighter mapping profile, in turn will produce a higher quality result. Once again, you can explore ground offsets in a bit more detail in our video, as well as our guide, which goes into a lot more details on this. Capturing focused images. An out of focus image has the potential to render the whole project unusable, but at Hammer Missions, we've made an easy solution for that. By using the Hammer app, you're able to set the, the mission to the auto focus mode, which will automatically set the focus before, before the mission has started, enabling you to concentrate on the mission without having to worry too much about the focus. So essentially you want to make sure that your images are focused and having autofocus allows you to, to automate that process. Once again, uh, if you want to read more about automatically focusing before taking pictures in Hammer, we've got a separate link going into more details on that specific thing. Using a high megapixel camera. Camera technology in the recent years has advanced tenfold. Gone are the days were off of a low resolution camera. Today, it's very much about packing in those megapixels within the latest state of drone technology. Um, so you've got everything from 12 megapixel cameras to 20 megapixel cameras, 48 megapixel cameras, and most recently we are seeing 100 megapixel cameras being used on drones. The general rule is the higher the megapixel, the better the quality of the photo, and you're also able to collect high quality data whilst maintaining a good distance, a good safety distance from your target. In summary, we hope this, this particular video was able to walk you through some of the steps that you might take to collect high quality photogrammetry data. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the specific sections and specific points that we mentioned, please do go check out some of our other videos. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, we hope you enjoyed watching this video and we'll see you in the next edition of Knowledge Hub. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.